Hello everybody, welcome back to more Plants vs. Zombies. So, let's check out our Zen Garden. Oh boy, we got some plants that need some watering. And we're also going to need to invest in some fertilizer. Uh-oh, I literally don't have enough money to invest in fertilizer. That's not good. I hope I can get enough mo- Oh yeah, I'll get enough money to be able to buy some more. Well, there goes my chance of being able to purchase the marigold seeds that I wanted. Oh <laughs> uh, well. It's a new day, new time to water. That's gonna be, it's, it's unfortunate we gotta build up our cash again. In order to <laughs> get to the point where Stinky can make us filthy rich. But that's okay, we've gotten most of the important stuff that we need. I, I don't anticipate I'll need the 10 seed slot upgrade. Like, I'll get it if I can, but I'm perfectly fine going through the game with only 9 seed slots. Like, that's still insane. Alright, so when I use... I have at least a little bit of fertilizer, so if I grow up some of these plants, they'll give me some gold coins for doing so, and then I'll be able to buy more fertilizer. Like so. Yes, I need the fertilizer. Yes, I have almost no money left. That's okay. Grave Buster, when he grows up, is going to give me a bigger cash bonus than the Marigolds will. So they're all a bigger size, and then we just got to wait for Grave Buster. And then we can get started on the minigames. Here we go. Beautiful. We have very little money, but that's okay. So, we've only got five minigames left, and I think they're not going to be too bad. However, we're starting off with a very interesting one. Last Stand. This one is very unique. So, it's a pool level. And look at all those zombies. That's a lot of zombies. So, the gimmick for this level, no sunflowers, no sun shrooms. You have no sun-producing plants instead. We have 5,000 sun to start with every time we... And what'll basically happen is we pick our plants. We can set up all of our plants. Like, none of them have a recharge. We just set them up and then we say, okay, we're ready to start. And then a huge wave of zombies will come. If we can beat the huge wave of zombies, then we'll get more sun to plant more stuff. Now, <laughs> here's where fiends get interesting. There is an achievement in the iPhone version. It's called Soul Invictus where you get a... Uh, an achievement if you can clear this minigame with at least 2,000 sun remaining at the end. So I'll do my best. So, we're definitely taking cattails. We're definitely taking winter melons. Those guys are going to be very good. Uh, what else? Actually, maybe I'll try to get gloom shrooms. So for gloom shrooms, we're going to need fume shrooms. Pumpkins are also going to be very necessary for that. And, uh, one-time use plants are not going to be good on this level. Just just putting that out there. Garlic also won't be great because there's going to be a huge amount of zombies coming our way. Um. Oh, jeez. Maybe Magnet Shroom? Not sure if I'll actually be using them, though. Alright. So let's start by making some Winter Melons. Actually. So I'm going to put Winter Melons in those lanes. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start putting Gloom Shrooms down. So Gloom Shrooms, we got to plant them on Fume Shrooms. They're still going to be asleep, so we got to wake them up. And again, Gloom Shrooms attack a very small area, so they're going to be able to attack this area around here. We need to make sure we put pumpkins on them, because otherwise they will get ripped to shreds. I'm actually going to put a couple of these guys down. I know I mentioned that Cattails are kind of the best plant, but no. Gloom Shrooms are. You're, you're gonna see just how stupidly overpowered they are. I will put some cattails in the back lane. I'll make these guys winter melons as well. Winter melons are the same as melon pults, except they also inflict slowdown on any nearby zombie that's near the watermelon that it hits, so they're crazy good. Alright, let's see. To get a gloom shroom, you need 150, so 225. 300 for the gloom shroom, and then 125 for the pumpkin. Alright. There we go. So, I'm a little worried about the upper and lower lanes, because they only have a single melon bolt in each of them. But I think we should be good. These guys are going to shred most things that come their way. Oh, 
You also can sell the plants that you put down. If they're undamaged, you can sell them back and get the sun back. However, for the case of upgrade plants, you're only going to get the amount of sun back for the upgraded part. So if I sell a Gloom Shroom, I'm only going to get 150 back. I'm not going to get the sun back that I spent on the Fume Shroom or the Coffee Bean. So, something to keep in mind. And, like, if I sell a Winter Melon back, I only get 200 back instead of 500. So, just, just something to keep in mind. Okay, yeah. As you can see, like, look at what the Gloom Shrooms are doing. They're just hitting, they're shredding these little zombies, like, basically as soon as they get within their range. The cattails are going to be kept busy in the upper and lower lanes, I think. Yeah, watch what they do to this football zombie. Now, the football zombie is slowed down from the Winter Melon, but still, like, look at how much damage he's taking. His helmet's getting beaten up, and then, yeah, he's, he's already gone. Like, you cannot stand up to Gloom Shrooms. And this is why I put pumpkins on them. Remember how I said pumpkins were really, really good? Yeah, they are. And remember how I said that uh, dolphin rider zombies have more HP than you'd think? Yeah, they can pop up right in the middle of a bunch of gloom shrooms and actually eat for a decent amount of time. But I do believe this will be game. Now, I can't remember how much sun we get after each wave. I think we get 500. So I'm going to try to have 2,000 2, sun by the end of it. So we've successfully defended one flag. Actually, we got less than uh, less than 500. We have 500 now, but we had some leftover sun. So let's just go on the next onslaught. Also, you can only get sun back for shoveling plants in between the flags. So if I do it now, I won't get any sun back. I may have I may have overextended myself on the sun aspect. I don't I do not need that gloom shroom over there. Like it's it's helping a little bit, but I would be perfectly fine without it. And unfortunately, I can't, well, I can't shovel the pumpkin because it has taken damage and I won't get any sun back. And I'll only get 150 sun back for that gloom shroom. Whereas I've invested, let's see, how much have I invested? I've invested about 400 sun into that. So getting only 150 sun back is not a good return. I partly just really wanted to show up <coughs> to show off the gloom shrooms because I haven't yet, as well as the winter melons. Winter melons are really, really good in Last Stand. Oh, that poor buckethead zombie—he's gonna get ripped to shreds. Uh oh, that pumpkin is running a low on HP. That's the other thing. If you've got one gloom shroom sticking out, that actually will cause. So, like, if I had two Gloom Shrooms here, then it would be very hard to deal damage to the Pumpkin, because in order to attack the Pumpkin, you would have to get damaged by at least two Gloom Shrooms. Here, they only get damaged by one. Uh-oh. That guy's getting close. But, thanks to our Cattail friends and our Winter Melon, he's gone. So we might end up losing that Gloom Shroom entirely. So if that's the case, I actually... I didn't get any sun back. Okay. I thought you got sun back for that. You don't. Whoops. Guess that's only for an alternate last stand mode. Well, I feel sheepish. Yeah. There is a version of last stand where you do get sun back if you shovel, but I guess this is not it. That's okay. That guy was going to die this round anyways. As you, yeah, like, as you can see, it's very difficult for the zombies to even get close enough to start eating the pumpkin. Because they're taking so much damage from both of these gloom shrooms. And of course the cattails are able to pick them off a little bit. And yeah, look at how effective the winter melons are. Like, the watermelon is freezing any zombie even closer close to the place where they're getting launched. I 
probably should have put some gloom shrooms here and here to help out with the upper and lower lanes. But I think my cattails and winter melons will take care of it. I'll be worried if we have a couple of football zombies in, each, in the upper or lower lane. Like, that will give me cause for alarm. But thus far, I don't think that's happening. I can't remember how many flags this is. But someone tells me I'm not going to have 200, 2,000 sun by the end of it. I thought you got more sun at the end of each uh, wave. Uh oh, this is not good. Oh my gosh, we killed him just before he was able to start eating my plant. But this is still disconcerting. I hope my cattails really help me out here. I don't like this. I know these guys have very little HP, but okay. I think we should be in the clear, but that, that winter melon has taken some damage. Defended three flags. I think there are five flags. Yeah, we're only halfway to the 2,000, which is not great. I think I spent too much sun. I should not have planted that extra gloom shroom there. Even then, though, I think gloom shrooms might be... Might have been overkill for this because they are expensive like they're they're totally shutting down four of the lanes but i think i spent too much sun on them so realistically i probably should i should have gotten winter melon in the land lanes and then probably just a bunch of cattails and had like 500 sun remaining at the end of the initial planting if i had done that i think i still would have held off the assault so to speak That's okay, though. This is still fun. Or maybe I would plant, like, one column of the gloom shrooms here in the water. Or maybe just have the winter melons in the upper and lower lanes. Because winter melons are super expensive, too. And if the winter melons are in the upper and lower lanes, they would still be effectively slowing down the zombies in this lane, as long as there are zombies here. Because of how the icy splash damage works. And let me tell you what, Last Stand is the mode where um, the Jack in the Box zombies become terrifying. Because they can just blow up right next to your Gloom Shrooms and immediately destroy them. Thankfully, they blow up in this lane and not the lane above. Otherwise, they can just wipe out your Gloom Shrooms immediately and there's really nothing you can do about it. Oh, thank you for the chocolate. Okay, yeah, I'm only getting 250 sun in between the flags, so I'm not going to get that Soul Invictus achievement. Maybe I'll come back another time and actually complete that, but this this is a long minigame. At one time, the achievement was to have at least 1,000 sun remaining at the end of it, but then they changed it to 2,000 sun. To make it way more difficult. Also, it's weird that that pumpkin up there is far more damaged than the one down here. Real realistically, they should be at about equal HP levels. I guess far more zombies, have, far more tough zombies like Bucketheads have been spawning up in this water lane than the lower one. Ah, no. I hate it when the coins spawn right at the edge of the screen. It's easy to accidentally click away from it. Yeah, I think if I were to do this differently... Uh-oh. I'm not going to get the Soul Invictus achievement anyways, so... It's not even a fame in the Game of the Year edition, but... Thank you for all the chocolate. I could do... How about you guys drop some Zen Garden plants instead? That would be that would be great. Oh my gosh. 
Am I going to be okay? That Winter Melon down there does not have a lot of HP remaining. I actually just might flat out fail this. If that's the case, I gotta go back to the drawing board for how I want to, uh... I actually might fail this. Okay, well that Winter Melon's still alive, but I got double Buckethead down here. And this guy is also very close to death, so... We'll just see what happens, but I think that Winter Melon... Yep, that Winter Melon's toast. And I don't think even my, if my double Cattails will be able to take him down. Nope, I think that's the end. Alright, we survived for four flags. Gotta try again. Alright, I'm gonna shake up my strategy this time then. Alright, I'm still definitely doing winter melons. I'm still definitely doing cattails. Those guys are both essential. I'm not gonna plant as many winter melons. I'm only gonna have two, and they'll effectively slow down most of the lanes. Um, let's see. My main problem was the upper and lower lanes were not defended enough, and the aqua lanes were losing their pumpkins. So I'm not sure if I want to do gloom shrooms this time. They're very expensive. I think what I need, I need to serve, I need to end the first initial planting with at least 500 sun left. I don't think you get any sun at the end of, I think there are five flags, and I don't think you get any sun at the end of the fifth flag, and you get 250 sun for the others. So if I, if I have 500 sun or more remaining at the end of the initial planting, as long as I don't spend any more sun, we should be good. I could do something like, nah, not spikeweed. I'll bring the gloom shrooms along just in case, but I do not plan on using them. And I guess maybe spikeweed? I could bring doom shrooms. Cause doom shrooms can just wipe out the final wave, but nah, I don't like, I don't like one time use plants in this mode. I'll get spikeweed. Okay, so here's my plan. I'm only gonna put winter melons in those two lanes. I'm gonna put melon pulse here, but not make them winter melons. Because of the splash damage, it should effectively slow down basically every zombie. Now I'm gonna go kind of crazy with the cattails. All right, that's pretty good. That's a good amount of cattails. Okay, I cannot plant an extra lily pad. So I think what I'm gonna do is that's gonna be good. I'm gonna try this. And, and I've got a little bit of extra sun in case of an emergency so I can put a pumpkin down or like a spike weed or something. But I do not have enough sun left to put another cattail down and guarantee I'll get that soul Invictus achievement. I think this should be great, though. These, these melons should shut down pretty much anything that comes down these lanes. The cattails are here to deal with the water lanes, and they can also help out in these lanes wherever necessary. But, like, look at all those cattails. They're just going to shred the weaker zombies. And I think at this point, uh, because this is already a decent way through the episode, and we still have four mini games to play after this, I think I'm going to fast forward this, and I'll I'll come back and speak if I have anything of importance to say. Otherwise, enjoy this montage.
lost yet again. And also I realized I'm an idiot and that in order to have two thousand sun remaining at the end, I need to end the first initial building plays phase with at least a thousand sun, not 500. So yeah, it's not been a great counting day for me. So we're gonna try this again. I'm gonna bring walnuts this time to help out with the aquatic lanes and I gotta, I think, rethink my strategy yet again. So I'll still bring the gloom shrooms, whatever. I think, I think my strategy is going to have to involve Gloom Shrooms at some point. But I just want to see if this is going to be possible. So, if I put a Melon Pool in all of these lanes back here, how much sun will I have left? Not very much, I imagine. Okay. This might work. We're going to do this. We're going to put some Walnuts on here. And... We're just going to see how this goes. Forget the cattails. We're just going to try melon pulse. Because I'm like, the melon pulse were doing a great job of keeping the land lanes at bay. So maybe they're a better option because of that. That splash damage is just so freaking good. Because there are so many zombies that come and there's so many clustered together, that splash damage hitting every single zombie in its range is fantastic and if i've got these in every single lane i don't need the cattails to be able to help out because these guys should be powerful enough theoretically to just put them away by on their own however i can't use winter melons here so that might come back to bite me if i can't slow down the zombies there's a chance that i might not be able to keep them all at bay but we're just gonna see how this goes if this doesn't work then i'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board yet again because I want to have 2,000 sun remaining. If I was willing to spend all my sun, this would be really easy. I'm just trying to get that non-existent Sol Invictus achievement. I could already tell that was not going to work. The Jack in the Box zombie blew up at the worst place, and yeah, I'm not going to be able to hold them all back that way. Alright. I think I'm going to have to bring back the Gloom Shrooms, but I'm going to have to use them in a very specific way, I think. Something tells me that's the only way we're going to get through this. Alright, so how do we want to do this? We definitely need Gloom Shrooms. Alright, that's already a good amount of our budget gone. Honestly, this is already looking a lot better. Let's try this. I restarted the level because I had a better idea. No, no, that's fine. Let's rock. I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did, but with one small change. I'm going to move the, f the Gloom Shrooms farther back. I had them here, but that means that the zombies will pop up and just immediately start chewing the, the shrooms in the on the huge waves. I'm going to put them farther back, so that way the zombies that pop up here have to swim, and they'll be able to take damage from the Gloom Shrooms without immediately being able to eat the pumpkin. And I think that will help us because we really aren't going to be able to replenish our pumpkins very much. We have enough leftover sun that we can replenish one pumpkin, and that's it.
Why is this so difficult? I don't I don't understand why this is so difficult. Oh, brother. We're trying it again. This is gonna be one heck of a long video, but we're doing this. Alright. Gloom shrooms are definitely the way to go. Also take walnuts, because they're a cheap way of holding off the zombies. Alright. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing that I did last time. Although, with one key difference. I'm gonna see, do we even need cattails? I'm honestly not sure if we need cattails. While they can be nice in the early levels, or in the early stages, later on there are so many zombies, and they can only hit one at a time, even if they can fire rapidly, I'm not sure if they're gonna make that much of a difference. So, I'm gonna hold off on planting cattails, gonna keep all this sun to myself, and then we've got things like walnuts to plant in case of emergency. So, we'll, we'll just see what happens here. Yes! Oh my gosh! Finally, that strategy worked. Winter melons in the back of the land lanes, put walnuts in front of them here and here, and then the line of gloom shrooms. That will set things straight. The only zombies that can hurt the, the gloom shrooms in the water are the bucket uh, ducky tube zombies. And really the only thing that might pose a threat to you that could ruin this is if a jack-in-the-box zombie blows up one of these. Otherwise, that's how you do it. And we have 2,000 sun or more remaining, so we would get the Soul Invictus achievement if this was the iPhone version. And wow, that's the first minigame we've beaten this uh, video, and I am, well, it's going to be shorter for you because I sped a lot of that up, but uh, at least recording-wise, I'm over 50 minutes right now, so, yeah, let's keep going. Let's go off to Zombotany 2. Ooh, it's a pool level. And this is interesting, so we've got all of those pea shooter zombies, we've got the walnut zombie, the taunt zombie, which has a ton of HP, 
Squash Zombie, I believe, when you kill him, will just crush you. Or will, like, mash something that's next to him. Jalapeno Zombie, you gotta kill quickly, otherwise he will burn the zombies in your lane, at least as far as my understanding. And then we've got Gatling P Zombie, who will spit a bunch of peas at you at a much, much faster rate. Like, quadruple the rate of these guys. So we gotta be prepared. So we definitely need sunflowers, that's a must. They gotta have lily pads. Cattails are gonna be great. Um, what else? Garlic? I really like the garlic setup that we had last Zombotany. That worked super well. Only this time, instead of using, uh... Instead of using, uh, starfruit, we're gonna use gloom shrooms. Because we can. And, let's see, beyond that... Maybe we'll just use Spikeweed. Because they have to walk over the Spikeweed's head. I like this. Let's go. Nope. That's where the play button is on the iPhone version, so I click that instinctively. Alright, we're gonna put the sunflowers in the top lane. Garlic everybody to the middle lanes. That's where the... Uh, gloom shrooms are gonna be. Oh, crap. I didn't bring any instant death plants. That's really stupid of me. That's really stupid of me. Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Change your plans. We can't use Gloom Shrooms because that just takes too many seed slots. So, instead, we'll go the old reliable route. And also, there's no achievement for doing this without walnuts, tallnuts, or pumpkins, so we're going to do that to our heart's content. And what else? That honestly might be good. Oh, it's the death plants. Duh. We need squash. Oh, I want potato mine as well, actually. So, I'll say sayonara spikeweed. Hello, potato mine. Spikeweed actually might be really useful, but... Oh well, we have cattails. I'm not worried. At the very least, this is going to be a lot easier than the last level. Again, the last level was only super difficult, specifically because I was trying to have a bunch of sun at the end of it. That is the only reason. I'll save Mr. Potato Mine there for when we actually, after he blows up. As soon as he blows up, I'm gonna plant another one. up there to protect my cattail. I'm gonna put some garlic up there as well. Oh my, this is great. <laughs> He's so disgusted. Cattails are going to make this a lot easier. I am a little worried about the jalapeno zombies. Just a tad. No aquatic zombies yet. That's interesting. Uh, 
Ah, here come the aquatic zombies. Oh, that garlic down there is on death's door. We better put another one behind him. That garlic is also on death's door. Aw. I feel bad seeing the garlic cry. Starfruit are good, but cattails are basically like starfruit times 11. They're crazy powerful. Here come the squash. Okay, so that squash just insta-killed the garlic. And that squash was fast. I forgot about that. This is why it's important to have double garlic. So yeah, I forgot. The squash doesn't kill your guys when his HP is low. He just gets kills your guys when he gets close. I'll start putting potato lines at the end of here. <laughs> Wow, I haven't even needed to use the squash yet. <laughs> you don't stand a chance against the King of Thieves. Because again, the potato mines are so low, they won't be able to shoot them with the peas. And if they do somehow get past all my defenses, well, they won't. Oh, that's right, here's Jalapeno Zombie. So if we can kill him... Yeah, so we killed him in time, so he didn't actually get a chance to do anything. <laughs> wow. Wash just got rid of that garlic. That wasn't a very nice thing to do. Well, let me tell you what, Imitator really comes in handy for some of these upgrade plants, because cutting the recharge time for cattails in half is really good. Oh, that's interesting. If they actually finish eating the garlic with their bite, it won't make them go into the other lane. I actually did not know that. <laughs> Squash top didn't get to hurt anybody. Oh, here's Tallnut. Oh, that's not good, actually. I'm gonna take out Jalapeno Zombie before he can get rid of all my cat tail. Oh, I didn't even need to. I wanted to, though. I ain't risking that. Oh, thank you for getting me a plant. It might be an aquatic plant for my Zen Garden, which I won't be able to do anything with. Man, this would be a lot more difficult if there were a lot more squash zombies, I'll just say that. <laughs> oh, this is fun, though. And like I said, if you ca in case you didn't believe me that uh, cattails are just stupidly overpowered, check and made. Oh, Gatling pea is apparently an aquatic plant as well. I thought Gatling peas were only land plants because in the in the opening intro it looked like the only guys that had ducky tubes were the regular pea plants. Oh well. I don't think I need any more potato lines than that. <laughs> it's weird that the squash zombies are super fast compared to the other zombies. Let's just replace that garlic. Wow. 
Oh, wow. Was there a squash zombie that got rid of him? Hi, jalapeno zombie. Jalapeno zombies must not do that burning move until very late. And part of... I guess if, if I had 10 seed slots for this level, I definitely would have brought spike weed. Because imagine them having to walk down this long lane on top of a bunch of spike weed. Like, checkmate. Oh, no you don't. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> As it turns out, Zombotany is actually really easy if you know the strategy. And if you bought the Cattails. Cattail would be the best plant in the game, probably, or at least top, like, three plants, if it weren't for the fact that they only work on levels with water. Like, if they worked on the rooftop levels, like, game over, yeah. Alright, Zombotany 2, that was significantly more fun and a lot easier than Last Stand. <laughs> I like that. And we get a new minigame. So now we unlock the final minigame. Oh, interesting. That's going to be fun. All right, let's go to Walnut Bowling 2. This is what I thought the original Walnut Bowling in the minigame mode was. So here we're going to have a lot more zombies. We also get a new Walnut Bowling type thing. This is the giant walnut, where they will just hit destroy all the zombies in the lane. They don't actually bounce around. Oh, we missed the newspaper zombie. No, we didn't. Ha ha. Trust me, these giant walnuts are really, really good, so definitely take advantage of them. Alright, let's time this to see if we can bounce it off the wall this guy. Darn it, he bounced down. That's the problem. The walnuts just always seem to bounce the wrong direction. I you I don't think you have any power over which way they ricochet. Unless, of course, you could put them in the top lane or the bottom lane, in which case they always go the opposite direction. So. Here we go. Screen door zombies. They'll take quite a few walnuts to bring down, unless you have an explodo nut. Or a giant walnut. This is generally the level where it's easiest to get the Roll Some Heads achievement. You can kill the Scringor zombies with one regular walnut if you can ricochet into them from the side, because that only protects them from the very front. Like so. So I actually think the Scringor zombies are some of the most fun zombies in the Walnut Bowling minigame. Ah, it's beautiful. Doggone it! Like, it feels like they always bounce the wrong direction. Alright, this- <laughs> Alright, I know, I have my plan. Boom. Then for this one... Unfortunately, I don't think the roll that your head, some heads achievement works on any of the plants except the regular walnut that bounces around. Be a little busted otherwise. 
boom. Oh, hey, it's Disco Zombie. Disco Zombie is very useful for getting the roll some heads achievement. Now, one thing is, apparently in this version, you only need to hit five zombies with a single walnut to get that achievement. I swear in the iPhone version, it was um, six. So technically speaking, by iPhone rules, if I'm unless I'm wrong, I did not get that achievement. Beautiful. No, you're supposed to bounce down. Photo nuts are still the best walnut because they can hit, they can destroy just so many zombies in multiple lanes. Will vaulting zombie get over that? No, vaulting zombie can't even get over the giant nut. Oh yeah, look at all those disco zombies. Right for the picking. Exploto Knight might have been a better choice there, now that I think about it, but... Man, that guy's vaulting pole has a huge range. The, the Walnut Bowling games are not difficult, unless you're trying to get the achievement. But they are fun. I like it. See, this is one of those Plants vs. Zombies minigames where I'm like, this is actually really good. I feel like a lot of them are just kind of like, this was an interesting idea, but it's not that fun. I probably am not going to go back and play it. But some of them are actually pretty interesting. So that's unfortunate. I don't like having a screen door zombie at the front of the lane. Second huge wave. Yeah, the, di the disco zombies and their backup dancers have very weird movement. Like, even if they're the only ones dancing, they'll occasionally just stop and do the disco. Alright. Take this black beard. Ouchy, ouch. <laughs> Ouchy, ouch. Oh, yes, another point for the Zen Garden. I've gotten a... I think that's actually only my second one. This Gozami never knew what hit him. Alright, I gotta watch out because I am out of Explodo Nuts. Also, the speed at which the walnut moves is also random. Like, sometimes you'll put one down and it goes really fast, sometimes it'll go very slow. That also will play a role in the Rolls Heads achievement, as generally you're not going to get it unless you get one of the slow walnuts. Which is kind of weird. Alright. Alright. I thought I was going to get a bit of a combo than that. I 
And that's why I held on to those giant nuts. Because they can really save your hiding. I'll take more big nuts. Why can't I use walnuts like this on regular levels? I know how to do it. I do love the, how they make the bowling pin sound effects. It's a long one. I know it's the final wave of mini games, but still. Yes, I am loving all these Zen Garden plants. All right, I'm gonna wait. Boom. See if we can get a combo. That was a not great combo. Boom. Yeah. That's a fun one. I do like wa walnut bowling. Went on for a little long, though. All right. Got two left, starting with Pogo Party. This one's fun. It's a rooftop level that is filled to the brim with pogo zombies. In the iPhone version, there's an achievement for beating this without using tall nuts or magnet shrooms to stop them. So we're gonna just try that out. So we're gonna want sunflowers, it's a roof, so we're gonna want flower pots. Definitely take snow peas, definitely take squash. Basically all the instant death plants you can get your hands on, you're probably going to want. Uh, We're gonna need a catapult plant of some kind, so definitely kernel pult. Colonel Pult will be useful for stopping them. Uh, Cherry Bomb's always good. So is Jalapeno. I might take both, actually. I'll take Melon Pult. Garlic won't work on them. Neither will Potato Mines. They hop over Potato Mines. The pumpkins are useless, because again, they just hop over the pumpkins. Maybe Cabbage Pult? Nah, no, let's go... No, we don't need winter melon because we got snow pea. This is where I would take double squash if I could. I'll actually take chomper. You know, in case of emergencies, if I have enough sun, chomper's a one-time bite. Or, even though there are no bun- actually... No. I'm taking umbrella leaf. Because it's a rooftop level. On a rooftop level, there will be bungee zombies. It's a fact. Even if they're not shown, there will be bungee zombies, at least at the huge waves. Oh, yes, it's been so long since we've heard this song. If you have Imitator, definitely take Double Squash. Also, if you're not trying to get the non-existent achievement like I am, definitely take Tall Nuts and or Magnet Shrooms. I recommend Tall Nuts. Thank you for giving me a long start. Alright, 
Here's the first one. Alright. This is where snow peas are going to be very, very useful. Because snow peas can slow this guy down. Now, I don't think that's going to be enough to stop him, but it's enough to slow him down, so that way we can get another squash out. Remember, you can put them on the, the left, the rightmost slope tile, and it will still work. The peas will be able to shoot up that. All right. Alright, Squash, I'm really hoping that you come through for me, otherwise I'll need to resort to Cherry Bomb. Ah, nah, Squash is a pal. Let's see if I regret not picking Chomper. Chomper actually can be useful on this level if you're trying to go for the Sproin Sproin achievement. Alright, I need more sun, I gotta get Cherry Bomb! So I don't think a single snow pea by itself will be able to take him out, but I think a snow pea plus a kernel hole will. So a lot of this is just stalling for long enough. Until you can put up a defense that will effectively take down the Pogo zombies. Oh man, if I'd put a Colonel Pult down instead, he actually might have died. Trust me, slowing down the Pogo Zombie makes them a lot more manageable to deal with. Alright, huge wave of zombies is approaching. I should have planted those extra sunflowers a little earlier. Ah, well. Gotta make sure my snow peas are protected from the bungee zombies. Because they are expensive to replant. <gasps> I'm angering the Plants vs. Zombies fans. No, you're not making the lawn symmetric! <laughs> Correct, I'm not. But it's still working out for me. Because basically the only zombies you encounter are pogo zombies, once you've got a strategy down that can effectively take down pogo zombies in the lane, like, you're good. Now we'll start using some melon bolts, because we can afford it now. Also, even just putting flower pots up here will cause them to slow down a bit, because they'll have to stop and hop over it. Which actually is slower. There we go, Pogo Party's not so bad, even if you're trying to get the achievement. It's all just about knowing the strategy. Knowing you can put snow peas on that part of the roof does make it a lot more manageable. Yeah. 
I might as well got these melon points. Again, because... Because every enemy basically is a Poko Zombie, they're not actually going to attack our plants. So defensive plants outside of Tall Nuts are kind of useless. And it's amazing. So, like, we don't even have to worry about putting our Melon Pults in the front of the lane, because... They're just gonna hop over them instead of trying to eat them. Where did all these zombies find all these pogo sticks? Yeah, at this point, the level's already won. I don't see any way for them to really make a comeback. Even if some bungee zombies take some of my melon bolts, like, it doesn't matter. I still have cherry bombs, jalapenos, and squash. I can, I can shut down every lane when the final uh, wave comes in. Yeah, so the minigame order in uh, this version of the game is a lot different from the iPhone version. So again, iPhone version for the minigames, you can replay the story mode uh, minigames at any time you want. So every, le every level five from uh, adventure mode for each world, you can replay at any time. But as far as like purchasing the minigames, because you, you had five different packs you had to purchase. So mini pa minigame pack one, I think they were each like, I can't remember exactly how much. I think they were each like 10,000, 20,000, something like that. So the first pack, oh, there we go. There's the trophy. So you could put, replay all those. You started with Zombotany. The first pack had the Zombaquarium. Uh, it's raining seeds and calm like you see them. The second pack had uh, the slot machine, Begooled, and Portal Combat. The third pack had Walnut Bowling 2, the Seeing Stars, and the Bobsled Bonanza. The fourth pack had Invisigool, Last Stand, and Zombotany 2. And then the fifth and final pack had Begooled Twist, Pogo Party, and then Zombie Nimble, Zombie Quick. And then this one, Dr. Zomboss's Revenge. I had not played before. I don't know if this is going to be just a repeat of the final boss battle or if this is going to be like a harder version of it, but I'm down for it either way. Dr. Zomboss's Revenge. What is going to happen here? So it looks like it's just the final boss battle again. Okay, it looks like we're getting the same plants. Okay, yeah, this looks... this looks the same. Oh, I didn't even know he was gonna put a guy down there, but that's great. Okay, this looks like it's just the final boss battle again. That's not really a mini game at all. Well, as as we all know, jalapenos do the best amount of damage against the zombies, so there we go. Yes, thank you for giving me flower pots that I don't need. Alright, Zomboss, he's so happy.
Oh, that poor vaulting zombie. Double melon pull flame. That was not the lane to go through, my friend. Ah, uh, cabbage pull. As you've seen, I have not really voluntarily picked Cabbage Bolt after getting Colonel Bolt. He's just outclassed. I feel bad for him, but it's the truth. Okay, he's absolutely gonna throw the truck pretty soon, isn't he? Oh no! I wasted a jalapeno! <laughs> Come on, for the truck. Oh no, he's just using bungee zombies instead. That's okay, we still have plenty of melon bolts. Oh, screen door zombie, why do you even exist on this level? Okay, Zamboni is a little uh, bit tougher. Oh no. During last stand, every time I heard that Pop Goes the Weasel medley, I, I, my heart dropped. Because he can just instantly take out your plants. Why is this guy not affected by butter? <laughs> so what I'm hearing is that the zombies do not like... Oh, no. Oh, thank you! That was... I, that was probably the best place he could have thrown it, to be honest. Zombies really don't like jalapenos. Zombies can't handle spicy food. Zomboss is like, look, I know you had a hard time playing the last stand, so I'm going to make the last minigame a little bit easier. No, not Jack in the Box Zombie. Okay, yeah, please, take those. I don't care if you take Cabbage Bolt. He's not very good. Actually, Colonel Bolt's not very good on this level, either. Because he can't freeze Zomboss. damage. More than halfway there now. I think he has more HP in this version. Like, he's got to. Alright, he, he can throw the truck. Okay, that was a little more painful. Not too bad. He's, he like, he's not crushing all my melon bolts. That's the thing. <laughs> I appreciate that. Pogo Zombie, you are in the wrong part of town, my friend. Oh, Catapult Zombie? Yeah, I, I can't allow that. Why do they- why are they targeting my Cabbage Pults? The Cabbage Pults are not dangerous. Well, they're a little bit dangerous. You, like, they should be targeting the Melon Pults, but nope. Also, wow, the game has been very generous with giving me Melon Pults. Alright, Zomboss, what you gonna do? I got a triple jalapeno for ya. Oh, that damage, though. <laughs> this may not be a hard final boss, but it is a fun final boss. Oh, no, no, my source of power. Don't take my melon pole. No. Oh, hey, Gargantuar. In the lane that I have a Colonel Pult, this could be great. <laughs> Alright, Zomboss, this might be your end. Uh, 
Alright, let's see if I can finish this here and now. Not quite. Almost, though. My gosh. It's crazy. No! YouTube alerts do not get the right to uh, pause my game. Ah, Gargantua couldn't even do anything. Oh, that, that guy's not gonna live. No way, Jose. Alright, here we go. Let's just finish him. Bye, Zomboss! Yeah, that was... That felt like it was easier than when we fought him in story mode. Give me my trophy. Yes! Yes, we beat all the mini games. We get the Beyond the Grave achievement now because we beat all 20 of the mini games. Beautiful, 20 trophies. Wow, that that video is an hour and a half recording wise. It's gonna be less when we actually upload it because a lot of that last stand stuff is either gonna be cut out or fast forwarded. But good lord, that took a long time. And let's extend it a little bit longer by attending to our Zen Garden, because we got more plants here to take care of. That was fun, though. A lot of those minigames are pretty great. Some of them are annoying, and some of them some of them are kind of dumb. Like, the Zomb Aquarium, I do not know why that's a minigame. It's so weird. It's not really that fun. And some of the minigames, like, the minigames that I had a hard time with were mainly only hard just because of the achievements that either are or are not attached to them in this version. <laughs> like, Soul Invictus. Or the... I mean, I got the Roll Some Heads achievement, so I'm gonna count that. I don't think I would have gotten it in the iPhone version. I, I think it's six. But it's five in this version, so I'm saying, you know what? That's the one I'm going for. Plus, that one is a little bit luck-based. Ooh, Snow Pea! That's great. What's this one? A lily pad. We can't do anything with lily pad until we buy the uh, aquarium garden, which sucks. Yay, you're grown to full size. We'll have to buy some fertilizer. And we'll also take advantage of buying all these marigold plants because we have the cash for it. We made quite a bit of cash this video. I know you just get a thousand every time you beat a minigame, plus an additional money for every uh, lawnmower you have left. Sunflower! Yay! Grave Buster gives me double. Aw, yeah. This is great. Okay, we got 10 chocolate bars. I don't think you can collect any more than 10. I actually thought 9 was the cap in the iPhone version, but I could be wrong. I'm not going to sell these plants. I'm definitely not selling any of these uh, regular plants, like the Cherry Bomb or the Grave Buster, unless I get duplicates. Because you, you can sell them for a good amount of money, but it's also hard to grab them. You can only get them through random drops, as far as I can tell. I'm not going to buy a mushroom garden or aquarium garden unless I have a huge amount of mushroom plants or, like, aquatic plants. Because the mushroom and aquatic plants you can sell for even more. I'm going to have to buy more fertilizer. And there we go. That's Zen Garden. We just spent a huge amount of our money. Again, short-term investment, long-term payoff. That's it for today. That was a really long episode, but I'm glad we were able to finish off the minigames. Next time we try puzzle mode, I believe there are three different puzzle modes. And, well, I really like two of them. One of them is just kind of meh. But there's, we're not going to be able to perform all of puzzle mode at this point. Uh, I think we can technically try, but there are at least going to be three different puzzles that I'm going to hold off for until maybe the end of the Let's Play, because they are, like, the three hardest things in the game. And then, after that, we got Survival Mode, which is also very interesting. And we might save part of Survival for the very end of the Let's Play. Thank you all for so much for watching. I know that was a long episode. Not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But if you tune in next time, we start Puzzle Mode with what I believe is my one of my favorite modes in the game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.